Hi friends, welcome to project time. In this video, I want to introduce a very useful circuit and that is the AC power and energy measurement circuit. You can see the PCB board and the display. Using this circuit, you can measure the AC voltage, AC current, AC power, and the kilowatt hour or the energy consumption of the AC loads, okay? Uh, so in the next step, I will explain the board and then I will go through the schematic and PCB. Then I will show you how you can calibrate this board. And then in the last step, I will make some tests and experiment. So stay tuned. All right, welcome back. Before I explain the board itself, let me show you the bare PCB board. I mean, this board without any component. This is the top view. And this is the bottom view. I had sent the gearbest to PCB way, and this is the results. As you can see, the quality is pretty good. Let me show you the board cutout or creepage areas. One, two, three, four, uh, five, six, and seven. Okay. We have to implement such areas. These areas are quite important to follow the safety rules because we directly deal with the mains voltage. I will explain more in the PCB analysis section, so just don't miss that. Uh, this is the board itself, mains input and the loads output, and this is the shunt resistor between the input and output, and this is the mains input protection area, MOV, fuse, NTC, and this is the, this is the capacitor for noise reduction, and this common mode choke uh, was used to reduce the noise also. Uh, here I have implemented two separate supply. One isolated supply for Arduino and another non-isolated supply to power this energy measurement chip. Uh, because this energy measurement chip needs an, a non-isolated supply with the mains reference, okay? Because it has to measure or it has to read the uh, shunt resistor values, okay? So, uh, this, the output of this isolated supply or this AC to DC conversion module comes to the Arduino and here, this chip sends the, senses the, or, the, or reads the AC parameters and sends the digital data through these two optocouplers to the Arduino, okay? And then Arduino, the software of the Arduino uh, makes calculation and show the results on the LCD and this potentiometer adjusts the contrast of the LCD and this IDC connector is for LCD connection like this there we go and this is the 4 row and 20 columns green backlight LCD uh, so that was a brief introduction to the board. In the next step, I will uh, explain the schematic and PCB. All right, as you see, this is the Altium designer environment because I have designed the schematic and PCB in Altium. If you don't have the Altium on your computer, there is a link in the YouTube video description that allows you to download the latest version of the Altium and activate it with a free legal license. I see the latest update is 22.7 and it has introduced a few nice features. I will check later on. Anyway, this is the schematic and this is the PCB layout. As you know, I explain everything in the article, so I just avoid explanation of the schematic here. However, there is a point, there is an important point. By default, I assumed uh, you will use four resistors in parallel to build a 1 milliohm shunt resistor. So we have four 4 milliohm re uh, resistors here. However, uh, I use two, 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 two milliohm resistors and you can follow that. However, this is the best configuration because it means more accurate shunt, re shunt resistor and also you increase the power rating of, the sh of your shunt because in this case, your resistor, your shunt resistor is 4 watts. 
However, if you use two resistors in parallel, your shunt resistor power rating is 2 watts. Before I go to the PCB, uh, there are some components here and there is a nice website that you can easily check the information of the imp uh, components quite fast. It's much better than the Google search engine. For example, let's look for this regulator chip and this Arduino Nano board. The website is Octopart. All services are free. So let's search for the Arduino Nano board. You see? It's much better than the Google search. So here is the board. And there we go. Uh, the suppliers, the price, and this is the inventory history of the part and there we go uh, if you forgot that what Arduino Nano is all about and it's written here frequency 16 megahertz and memory 32 kilobytes anyway that's a very nice website actually and also you can use this website to build your uh, bill of materials quite fast uh, Let's come back and search for the uh, regulator chip. Uh, the, com the part number was what it was. Yes, TS2937. And it's a 5 volts regulator. So the first one is fine. And there we go. You see that actually it's quite fast. I am amazed by this speed. It's a very good, uh, it shows that they have built this website on a very fast and reputable host company. So this is the results. You see that? This is from the Taiwan Semiconductor uh, manufacturer. And this is the inventory history. Yes, as it says, uh, it's a 5 volts regulator. The maximum input is 26, 26 volts and the output is 5 volts at 500 milliamps. So do you see that instead of Google search and wasting, wasting your time on the website, so just come here and quickly and easily search for your desired components and even parts. Uh, also, as I said, you can generate your bill of material, materials quickly using this website. Anyway, let's come back to the PCB. I had promised to talk about the creepage areas. So the creepage areas are important in such applications because we deal directly with the mains voltage and the mains current. So this is the phase and neutral input. And because these uh, copper tracks might carry high amount of current, we have to implement this creepage areas. I mean this one. It is pretty easy to implement this in Altium. However, I will not talk about that here. In future videos, I will follow that and I will explain how we can implement these creepage areas. It's pretty easy. And another point is at the bottom of the optocoupler. You see this is the uh, non-isolated side of the mains. It comes to, uh, to close contact with the uh, optocoupler output so we have to implement this creepage you see that so this creepage between these uh, mains lines this mains line and this output of the uh, optocoupler so this is a sensitive areas this is mandatory to implement such creepage here and also here mains input from here and the output of the optocoupler passes through here these three tracks, okay? So I have implemented two creepage or board cutout areas here. This one was optional, however, because one side is the ground of the Arduino, I just implemented this creepage here. However, the distance was, is not that much bad. It's optional here. However, these two areas are pretty important and mandatory. Uh, let me show you in 3D, show you the board in 3D, and there we go. This is the 3D view of the board, 
and Altium is pretty good in 3D demonstration. And there we go. Yes, another point is these exposed tracks. I have exposed and I have not covered these parts by the solder mask because these, track might, these tracks might carry a high amount of current. So if you use this circuit for high current applications, you have to strengthen these track, tracks using solder and also copper wires. It depends. So if you use for low, low power applications, well, might not necessary. However, if you use for more than 10 amps continuously, or even maybe for more than 5 amps, you're gonna strengthen. So just solder a copper wire here and on these areas. So I have not covered because you can easily solder your uh, wires here. It's a common practice. Let's go to the top side. Oh, this is the Arduino Nano board. So as you see, everything is pretty clear and straightforward. Uh, that's it. Let's go to the next step. All right. In this section, I will talk about the calibration process. However, the first question you might ask is why we even need to calibrate this thing? Does this mean that the energy measurement chip is not accurate no it's pretty accurate chip however let me tell you why uh, before i continue uh, i should tell you that the calibration process is pretty easy and is done in the software you don't need to change anything in the hardware you not you need you just need to modify the shunt resistor value in the code so just follow the article to see where in the code you should modify it's pretty easy let me explain. So this is the energy measurement chip. It reads the values, voltage values through here, and it reads the current values through this shunt resistor and this path, okay? The default value for the shunt resistor is one milliohm. So I use two, two milliohm, one percent uh, resistors in parallel to build a one milliohm shunt resistor. However, the question is, Am I sure this is exactly one million? No, I'm unsure because one percent is not absolute accuracy. One method is to measure the resistance. It's pretty difficult to measure such a low resistance in, in with high accuracy. So it's a much easier method to guess the value. Uh, the easiest method is to use a chip resistive load such as this uh, classic light bulb and measure the RMS, AC RMS current of this resistive load in an accurate devices like this uh, Siglent benchtop multimeter. Because why? Because a resistive load like this does not alter the sine wave, the AC main sine wave signal. So we can compare the current readings of the uh, multimeter and our device and we will modify the shunt resistor value till both reading match each other so very simple so you just need to measure the current of the load so let me connect this to the main so it says uh, the current, the RMS current is around 430 milliamps RMS. So the only thing we need to do is to modify the shunt resistor till the current readings of our device matches 430 milliamps. So very simple. That's it. Okay, I have connected an AC load to the output and this is the results. The device shows the mains voltage, the current consumption of the load, the power consumption of the load, and the energy consumption so far in kilowatt hour. So everything we need to know is written here. I hope you like this video. Don't forget to share and subscribe. Also, give me a big like and thumbs up. Catch you next time.